Jeff Malone could get hot in a hurry, relying on his lethal jump shot, and before you knew it, he had 20 points on you. Malone's mid-range game was his speciality, hitting fading shots in every which direction, contorting his body, nailing them at a high percentage, while also having a knack for running off screens for baskets and being consistently one of the best free throw shooters in the league, helping Malone develop into a consistent 20 point per game score for six seasons, making two all-star appearances for the Washington Bullets before heading to the Utah Jazz, providing a scoring punch alongside Carl Malone and John Stockton, helping the Jazz reach their first conference finals appearance in team history, then ending his career in Philly and Miami as age and injuries caught up to him. In his prime though, Jeff Malone was going to score in bunches on any given night. This is a look back on Jeff Malone's career. Jeff Malone was born in Mobile, Alabama and raised in Macon, Georgia. Growing up, he picked up the game of basketball attending Southwest High School, excelling on the court, getting recruited by most of the Southern schools, and Malone had wanted to attend Georgia staying in state to play for the team he grew up watching, but decided to switch it up and went to Mississippi State instead after Dominique Wilkins committed to Georgia and Mississippi State had an opening at the guard position. Malone would instantly be a starter his freshman year at Mississippi State, playing solidly before becoming the Bulldogs' go-to guy his sophomore year onwards, making the All-SEC team the next three years, culminating into a dominant senior season where he averaged 26.8 points, 2.3 assists, and 3.7 rebounds, winning him SEC Player of the Year and made third-team All-American, keeping his team afloat as he never played on a tournament-caliber team in college. After Malone's senior year, he was valued as a draft prospect because of his ability to score in bunches, hitting the mid-range shot consistently. And in the 1983 NBA draft, with the 10th overall pick, Jeff Malone was selected by the Washington Bullets. Malone was joining a Bullets team that was a fringe playoff competitor headed by Jeff Ruland. Jeff Malone stepped in to be the team's sixth man as his rookie season he was backing up Ricky Sobers where Malone came into the game and provided offense for the second unit, averaging 12.1 points, 1.9 rebounds, and 1.9 assists, making the all-rookie first team for his play. Jeff Malone's highlight on the year that helped put his name on a more national level was his game winner against the Detroit Pistons, hitting the game winner as he was falling out of bounds with it being high arcing, going down as one of the greatest shots in NBA history. Malone's addition had helped the Bullets make it back to the playoffs after going 35-47 and getting the 8th seed, in a series against a loaded Boston Celtics team with Larry Bird, Dennis Johnson, Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, and Cedric Maxwell. The series would be a physical one with Ruland keeping the Bullets around in games, but the firepower the Celtics had was too much in the end, defeating the Bullets 3 games to 1. Jeff Malone in his first postseason experience saw his minutes reduced and his numbers followed to 6 points and 1.3 rebounds. After the strong season from Malone, the Bullets in the offseason decided to move on from Ricky Sobers, trading him to Seattle for Gus Williams. The Bullets kept improving as well, trading for Cliff Robinson. Jeff Malone, after the move, stepped into the starting lineup to go on to become the second option on the offense behind Williams, averaging 18.9 points, 2.4 assists, and 2.7 rebounds. The offseason moves and Malone's growth saw the Bullets improve slightly, going 40 and 42, entering the playoffs as the sixth seed, meeting the 76ers round one headed by Julia Serving, Moses Malone, Andrew Tony, Maurice Cheeks, and Charles Barkley. And outside of game three, the series was heavily favored in the Sixers, winning the series comfortably behind Irving three games to one. Malone put together a solid series, averaging 16.3 points and 2 assists, yet struggled to slow down Tony on the defensive end, providing a net even result. Jeff Malone next year took his game to another level to become the main guy on the team, averaging 22.4 points, 2.4 assists, and 3.6 rebounds, making his first All-Star game. As he was keeping the Bullets afloat with Rulin missing time with injury, Going 39-43 and 43 on the season, making it back to the playoffs the Bullets did, in a deja vu moment as the 6th seed to play the 76ers. This time though, the 76ers entered the series without Tony and Malone as both were injured, but the Bullets were in a similar boat as they were still missing Ruland as he wasn't fully healthy, creating a rather good series between the two teams. Game 1, the Bullets and the 76ers were in a tight contest late thanks to Jeff Malone leading the way with the Bullets, scoring 21 points. The Bullets were down one having the ball for the final possession when Dudley Bradley came through hitting the buzzer beater winning game one in Philly. The 76ers would respond winning the next two games taking back home court advantage with big games from Barkley. Game four the Bullets would take one back forcing a game five as Jeff Malone went for 32 points 
and the series ended in an anticlimactic way in Game 5 as the 76ers blew out the Bullets, sending them home. Jeff Malone over the series was the driving force for the Bullets, averaging 22 points, 3.4 assists, and 3.2 rebounds. In the offseason, the Bullets would make a blockbuster trade with out of all teams in the Philadelphia 76ers, trading away Jeff Rulon and Cliff Robinson for Moses Malone. The Bullets, however, would lose Gus Williams in free agency, making the Bullets both of the Malone's team. Moses became the main option, and Jeff Malone played the second fiddle, averaging 22 points, 3.7 assists, 2.1 rebounds, making it back to the All-Star game. However, the move for Moses Malone did not improve the team as intended, as he went 42-40 and 40, again, getting the sixth seed. This time to face the forming bad boy Detroit Pistons with Isaiah Thomas, Adrian Dantley, Dennis Rodman, Vinny Johnson, Bill Lambeer, and Joe Dumars. Where, as one would guess, with the talent being that lopsided, the Pistons swept the Bullets out of the playoffs. Malone was a part of the reason for the team's swift exit as he did not perform to his regular season form, averaging 15 points, 3 assists, and 2.3 rebounds over the series. A small consolation for Malone was he led the playoffs in free throw percentage being perfect from the line. Going into next year, the Bullets would sign Bernard King, who was coming off a serious injury missing considerable amount of time to bolster the team. Jeff Malone found himself becoming the leading scorer on the team again despite King's addition to average 20.5 points along with 3 assists and 2.6 rebounds. But again, the offseason moves hadn't paid off for the team as they went 38-44 and making it into the playoffs the 7th seed to face the Pistons again round 1. The Pistons jumped out winning the first two games despite Jeff Malone going for 33 game 1 and 31 points game 2. However, the series would change as the Bullets went back home to Washington, winning both to tie the series up after Jeff Malone again led the way in scoring with 35 points game 3 and 25 points game 4. Game 5 back in Detroit was all Detroit as they had finally managed to shut down Jeff Malone, winning the game comfortably and the series. Jeff Malone had taken the Pistons to the brink of elimination, averaging 25.6 points, 2.2 assists, and 3.4 rebounds over the series. In the offseason, after another round one exit, Moses Malone left in free agency. Jeff Malone, as a result, increased his scoring next season to 21.7 points to go along with 2.9 assists and 2.4 rebounds. With Moses Malone gone, the Bullets missed his presence down low, going 40 and 42, missing the playoffs. Jeff Malone next season became an even bigger part of the offense as it was primarily only him and King. Malone averaged 24.3 points, 3.2 assists, and 2.7 rebounds, being a bright spot on the team and similar to the last season, the Bullets continued to slip downwards, going 31-51 and 51, missing the playoffs. After the season, the Bullets decided to embrace the rebuild, trading away Jeff Malone as a part of a three-team deal to the Utah Jazz, with the remain return being Purvis Ellison. Jeff Malone was joining a Jazz team looking to break through in the playoffs, needing him as the third wheel to John Stockton and Carl Malone. Correlating in Jeff Malone's numbers not being what they were in Washington, but he was on a winning team averaging 18.6 points, 2.1 assists, and 3 rebounds, helping the Utah Jazz go 54-28, making the playoffs as the 5 seed, where they would play the Phoenix Suns round 1, who had sent them home the prior year with Tom Chambers, Kevin Johnson, Xavier McDaniel, and Jeff Hornacek. This time, Karl Malone would exact his revenge from last postseason, dominating the Suns, winning the series for the Jazz three games to one, as Jeff Malone and Stockton complimented him well. Round two brought a deep Portland Trailblazers team with Clyde Drexler, Terry Porter, Jerome Kersey, Kevin Duckworth, Buck Williams, and Clifford Robinson. The Blazers jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the series as Terry Porter hit a game winner with 3.5 seconds remaining and made the defensive stop on Stockton at the horn. Game 3 as like most of the series, Carmelo dominated winning the game for the Jazz. Game 4 would find itself being another close one, but Portland held on to a victory late as Clyde Drexler hit a big shot and stole the ball down the stretch. In Game 5, the Blazers put away the Jazz 4-1 thanks to a big third quarter. Jeff Malone was a large reason for the Jazz's postseason success, as he was the right-hand man to Carl Malone, with Jeff Malone averaging 20.7 points, 3.2 assists, and 3.9 rebounds over the postseason. Next season, Jeff Malone found more comfort within the offense, increasing his scoring to 20.2 points, as well as averaging 2.2 assists and 2.9 rebounds. 
helping the Jazz take the next step going 55-27, and making the playoffs as the two seed. Round one brought the Los Angeles Clippers with Ron Harper, Charles Smith, Danny Manning, and Doc Rivers. The Jazz would jump out to a 2-0 lead on the Clippers with Carmelo taking care of business before the series headed back to LA where the Clippers would reverse the script winning both of their games tying up the series 2-2 with Ron Harper elevating the team, creating a winner go home game 5 in Utah where the Clippers would finally slow down Carl Malone somewhat but it was not enough as Jeff Malone got hot scoring 25 points sending the Jazz into round 2. Where the Jazz met the Seattle Supersonics with Ricky Pierce, Sean Kemp, Eddie Johnson, and Gary Payton. The Jazz would handle the Sonics this series behind both the Malones, winning the series four games to one, as Jeff Malone led the team in scoring in two separate wins in Game 2 with 33 points and Game 4 with 24 points. Sending the Utah Jazz to the Western Conference Finals to meet the team who had sent them home the prior year in the Trailblazers, Terry Porter led the Blazers off to a hot start, going up 2-0 after big performances. Utah went on to win the next two games as Karl Malone picked apart the Blazers, tying the series up. The Trail Blazers afterwards seemed to elevate their play, waking up a bit, winning the next two games, sending Utah home after a massive series altogether from Terry Porter. Though falling one round short of the NBA Finals, Jeff Malone had helped the Utah Jazz make it the farthest they had been in the playoffs at that point in time in the Conference Finals with Malone being a key figure averaging 20.7 points and 2.4 rebounds over the postseason run. Next season, the Jazz tried to repeat its success as Jeff Malone played the same role, averaging 18.1 points and 2.2 rebounds, yet the team was finding it hard to duplicate its prior year's success, going 47-35 and making the playoffs as the sixth seed, meaning the Seattle Supersonics in the playoffs again. The Sonics were improving as its young star and Sean Kemp was emerging, creating a difficult series for Utah as Malone and Kemp battled, seeing the series be tied up after four games headed to the pivotal Game 5. Game 5, the Jazz looked in control headed into half as they held the Sonics to 30 points. The second half was an entirely different tale as the Sonics caught fire from the floor, rallying behind the home crowd to win the game and the series. Jeff Malone this playoff series was a factor in why the Jazz got sent home as he disappointed averaging 13.4 points and 3.2 rebounds over the series. Next season came around and Jeff Malone's numbers were starting to slip more after the poor playoff showing the prior season and midway through the year the Jazz decided to trade him when the right deal arose for the team. Jeff Malone was traded by the Utah Jazz with a future pick that became B.J. Tyler to the Philadelphia 76ers for Jeff Hornacek, Sean Green, and a future pick that became Junior Burrow. Malone had gone from a playoff team in Utah to a struggling 76er team that was retooling behind Clarence Weatherspoon and Dana Barros. Jeff Malone stepped in to play a similar role to that of what he did in Utah, but now for Weatherspoon, as Jeff Malone averaged 16.4 points and 2.6 rebounds as the second option within the offense between Utah and Philadelphia this season. Meanwhile, the 76ers went on to go 25-57 and 57 missing the playoffs. Next year, Malone found his rhythm in Philadelphia averaging 18.4 points and 2.9 rebounds, but battled injuries big time on and off, re-aggravating them only to go for 19 games. With the 76ers hurting, missing his absence, they would go 24 and 58, missing the playoffs. Jeff Malone would return next season for 25 games in Philadelphia, but he was clearly not at his prior form, with the 76ers deciding to waive Malone. As a free agent, Jeff Malone would go on to sign with the Miami Heat, but he would play even less games than that what he did in Philadelphia, playing in seven in Miami before being released again ending his season playing in a total of 32 games, averaging 5.8 points. In the offseason, after no NBA teams would sign Jeff Malone, he would go overseas to play for VAO in the Greek League, with hopes of Malone keeping the team from being relegated. Jeff Malone couldn't find his form again, averaging 14.6 points and 2.4 rebounds, shooting poorly from the floor in 12 games, not helping VAO stay up, and with Malone deciding to retire from basketball afterwards. Jeff Malone, over 13 years in the NBA, averaged 19 points, 2.6 rebounds, and 2.4 assists. In retirement, Malone stayed around the game of basketball, going on to become a head coach, in particular in the D-League, now known as the G-League, for the Columbus River Dragons in the Florida Flame. 
Jeff Malone will be remembered as a knockdown mid-range specialist, hitting them in large bunches with most of them being off balance, fading in any number of ways and directions, but the accuracy never wavered. Malone would also get a fair amount of his baskets running people off of screens to create his looks, and his jump shooting made him consistently into a 20 point per game score in Washington, making two all-star games as he led the team before heading to Utah, finding playoff success, playing well off of Stockton and Carl Malone, helping the Jazz reach their very first conference finals in team history, then ending his career in Philly and Miami after injuries caught up to him with age. However, Malone will be looked back upon as a scorer first and foremost in his prime, providing buckets as needed, getting hot in a hurry. Thanks for watching this video on Jeff Malone's career. If you want to see any other videos about any other random NBA players in the future, leave them in the comments below, and I may or may not decide to do them. Who knows? Thanks again for watching. This has been Skid Denver.